Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're reviewing the Hornby Harry Potter train set. Disney's Little Einstein's fan requested that we do this review for Halloween and since it's Halloween I'm getting a guest presenter from the Wizarding World to do the review for me. I wasn't sure how to get this to him but he said just to give it to his owls so here we go. Right, I'm off to put my feet up and have a butter bit. I'll see you guys in a bit. Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I'm Harry and Rob has asked me to review this train set for him that's just arrived in the Owl Mail. This is Hornby Reference R1234M and it's got a recommended retail price of $199.99 but if you hunt around the retailers you can find this for around about £150. This is the latest version of the set but Hornby first released this as R1025M in 2002 but there are quite a few differences between that set and this one and we'll take a look at those in more detail later. On the front here we've got a picture of the Hogwarts Express steaming away from Hogwarts and on the uh, left here we've got a picture of Harry looking very intense with his wand out. On the back here we've got pictures of all the accessories that Hornby do in the Harry Potter range. So we've got the buildings down here so they've released Platform 9 and 3 quarters, Hogsmeade Station and various other accessories. And on first impressions these accessories seem pretty expensive but they are unique and I suppose that's what you're paying for. I didn't buy any of the buildings but I did buy the two extra coaches which can be seen here and that's to make it up to the full four coach set that you can see in the film. The other product they do is a TTS sound decoder fitted version of the Hogwarts Express and I'm not sure why you'd want to buy that because you've already got one in here. The difference is the version in here is DCC ready. Being DCC ready this is set up to run on an analog layout but it's got a decoder socket fitted in the locomotive ready to take a decoder if you wanted to turn it into a digital locomotive. And I've got a TTS sound decoder here for a Hall class locomotive that I'm going to fit later. Right let's get this open and take a look inside. Okay I'm going to use one of my spells for this. Got my wand. System Aberio! Okay, so that's the box open. We've got our track work up here, and in this set you get a large overlay track with the siding, track pack A. Over here we've got the analog controller, which is pretty standard in these modern sets. In here we've got a little buffer, that's a nice touch for your siding. Then we've got some documents here. Um, it looks like just instructions with this set, no track mat as far as I can tell, and it's not listed as part of the contents of the box, so that's a bit disappointing. And then we get on to the models. So we've got our Hall class locomotive, the Hogwarts Express, up here at the top. And then hidden under here, we've got our two Hogwarts Express coaches. So what I'll do is I'll get the locomotive and the coaches out, take some photos, and we'll have a closer look. Here we have the Hogwarts castle and it comes in this lovely crimson colour. We've got nameplates on the side of the engine, Hogwarts Railways branding on the tender and on the headboard it says Hogwarts Express so Hornby have done a good job in recreating the locomotive from the film. Sadly the Hogwarts castle doesn't really exist, it's actually a Hall class locomotive called Alton Hall in disguise. Alton Hall was built in 1937 for the Great Western Railway and was repainted and rebranded for the movies, but did retain its running number of 5972. Hornby have used their Hall class railroad range for the basis of this and that was released in 2013. As I said previously there were some differences between when the Harry Potter train sets were first released and now and the main difference is the locomotive. In the first sets Hogwarts Castle was represented by a castle class locomotive so the newer sets are more accurate in that respect. 
In terms of detail, we've got what you might expect from a railroad range model. Although, compared to some railroad range models that I've looked at, I think this one seems to be better quality and have some nice features that others don't. We've got the narrow couplings and the buffers look metallic but they're not sprung. The cab has some glazing and moulded detail but that's all in black. We've got this tender full plate which is a nice touch but it seems to be fixed in position. The model comes pre-fitted with the vacuum tubes which is nice and we've got the usual coal load in the tender. We've got separately fitted railings around the boiler and individually painted parts on the top. On the front we've got a headlight which is really nice but I wasn't able to turn it on and off using the functions on the decoder. The tender is permanently attached to the engine and there are wires running between the two because there are pickups on the tender. And I think this is a massive positive because not only does it make the model far more reliable but it means the decoder socket can be housed in the tender. And this means there's plenty of room to fit a sound decoder. I fitted the Hornby TTS sound decoder earlier and it was really easy with just two screws securing the tender body and it came away really easily to reveal the socket. If you did ever want to disconnect the tender, the wires can actually be unplugged which again is a nice feature. So overall I'm pretty impressed with this loco, let's get it on the rolling road and see how it performs. So here we are on the rolling road, I'm using the Hornby Select controller and let's start by putting it on half power. Okay, so it's pulled away nice and smooth, and that's a nice half power speed. Let's turn it up to the max and see what that does. Okay, so we've got a good top speed there, probably a little bit too quick really, and it looks to have plenty of pulling power, and although it's not the heaviest model, I think it should be fine with the full four coach set. Now let's see how slow we can go and how smooth it is. Okay, so we're slowing down now and I'm towards the bottom of the controller range and that's pretty nice that's perfect for controlled stops at Hogsmeade station now let's take a look at the coaches the set comes with two Mark 1 coaches both in the Hogwarts Railway branding one coach comes with compartments and that has running number 99716 and we get a brake coach as well with running number 99723. Both the coaches look to have metal wheels which is nice and as well as the Hogwarts branding on the sides we've got some printed information on the ends as well. I actually think the level of detail of these is pretty impressive. The door handles have all been picked out in a separate colour and we've got bars running down the windows in the brake coach. Just like the locomotive they've got the narrow couplings and I think the main thing is these accurately reflect what you see in the film. So I've just taken my Polyjuice potion and it's time to give an honest opinion on the Hornby Harry Potter train set. Well, unlike previous versions, the models in this set do accurately depict the Hogwarts Express in the film, so that's a good start. I really like the Hogwarts Express headboard, the Hogwarts Castle nameplates, and the Hogwarts Railway branding on the sides of the coaches. They aren't the most detailed models, there are no sprung buffers, and the detail around the cab area and the coach interiors is a bit limited. However, there are a few features on the locomotive that I really like. The tender has pickups which makes the model really reliable and there's plenty of space to fit a sound decoder. We've also got the headlight at the front which is a really nice addition. At $199.99 it's a bit more expensive than the other Hornby train sets that offer a locomotive with two coaches. However, I think that extra money is paying for all the little features that I've just mentioned and the Harry Potter branding. I really like that you can buy all the stations and the buildings that feature in the film, so that means you can build a whole train set based in the Harry Potter world. As I said before, I think they're quite expensive. If you want to build the whole Hogsmeade station, it will cost you over £150. I also like that you can buy the extra coaches and increase the length of your train to replicate the four coach set seen in the film. So, overall, if you're into Harry Potter and you're into model trains and you can get this for around £150, I say go for it, it's a good value train set. If you're not that into Harry Potter, then maybe save your money or spend it on a Hall class locomotive from the land of the Muggles. Thanks to Rob for letting me do this review. If you've enjoyed the video, then please give the channel a like and subscribe. I'll leave you with some shots of the Hogwarts Express running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching and we'll hopefully see you again soon.